By now, you probably are used to the fact that when you restart your Arduino board, all variable values are lost. It is like turning the light off. And when you turn it back on, all variables are reset. Tabula rasa, clean slate. But what if I told you that there is a way to keep selected variable values so they are not wiped out by Arduino restart? In this video, I will show you how to use built-in EEPROM memory to achieve just that as well as explain what memory pools you have at your disposal when working with Arduino microcontrollers. Let's give it a go! Before we start talking about EEPROM in detail, let's get familiar with memory pools available to you when you program your Arduino. First, you have flash memory. Here, your Arduino sketch is stored. Then you have SRAM, which stands for Static Random Access Memory. Here you store all the variable values populated during the code runtime. And finally, you have EEPROM, which can be used to store long-term information that will be still available even after Arduino restarts. Think of it as a tiny built-in hard drive. The available sizes for all those three pools differ depending on the Arduino board you use. Where can I see how much memory is available to me? Let's start Arduino IDE and choose the most basic blink sketch as an example. After you compile it, in the bottom panel you can see all memory information. You see that our sketch is using 924 bytes of flash memory and how much memory is available in total. And also you see that sketch variables are using just 9 bytes out of 2048 bytes available. How is it possible that you see those numbers? We are not even connected to Arduino board, so how come compiler knows how much memory is available? In the bottom right corner you can see that we are writing the sketch for Arduino Nano. What's going to happen if we selected a different board, e.g. Arduino Mega? As you can see, we have more memory available for our sketch. Let's look more closely at the compiler outputs. Here is the first one for Arduino Nano. According to Arduino Nano datasheet, it has 32k bytes of flash memory. So that does not match with what we see here, as we have 30k available. But there is a simple explanation for this. Missing 2k are used for bootloader. The available SRAM is 2k, which matches information in the datasheet. Now let's check the output for Arduino Mega. Not 100% sure why the sketch consumes more memory running on Mega. Anybody wishes to comment on that? Here we have 256k of flash memory, out of which 2k is used by bootloader. And just as expected we have 8k of SRAM. We mentioned built-in EEPROM. So let's look at the Arduino Uno board and see if we can find it. Unfortunately this is going to be tricky as the EEPROM is actually an integral part of microcontroller chip. In case of Arduino Uno it is at Mega328. Depending on the type of microcontroller chip used, you have different sizes of EEPROM memory. At Mega328 chip, which can be found in Arduino Uno, Nano and Mini, provides 1 kilobyte of EEPROM memory. You can also find Arduino Nano boards with Atmega168, which provides only 512 bytes. But then you have Arduino Mega with Atmega2560, which provides sweet 4K. So what does EEPROM stands for? It is Electrically Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory. Now a few words on how EEPROM memory is organized. E.g. Arduino Nano's EEPROM has a size of 1 kilobytes. When working with EEPROM, we operate in bytes. Each EEPROM position can save one byte, which means you can only store 8-bit numbers, which include integer values between 0 and 255, like this one. First byte is at address 0, second is at address 1, etc. until last byte at address 1023. EEPROM is specified to handle 100,000 reads array cycles. This means you can write and then erase rewrite data 100,000 times before the EEPROM will become unstable. Seems a lot, but if you put EEPROM command in loop function, executed 1000 times every second, you are going to exhaust this limit quickly. 
so use it wisely. Before I start talking about available methods that can be used to write and read EE from memory, I need to create a breadboard prototype that is going to help me show you how all those methods work. Let's first build the prototype in Fritzing. Arduino Nano goes in first. Let's connect ground pin of Arduino to ground bus strips of the breadboard. Then we plug in three lily pad LEDs, white, red and green. Cathode of each LED is connected to breadboard ground strips and anodes are connected to digital pins 5, 6 and 7. Then we need three push buttons, one for each LED. Left legs of push buttons are also grounded and the right ones are connected to pins A3, A2 and A1. Normally you would require pull down resistors to make the buttons work. But because I have a lot of components to fit on a single breadboard, I decided to use built-in pull-up resistors. So I will be reading low signals at those pins whenever button is pressed, otherwise the signal will be high. To create more complex scenarios for using EEPROM, we would need one more push button added to our breadboard prototype. Again we ground left leg and connect right leg to pin A0. So now let's see if we can fit all those components on the real breadboard. It was tough, but here it is. Let's run a quick check. The LEDs are connected properly. The push buttons that control LEDs also look ok. Ah, there are problems with the fourth button. It is not connected to ground and connected to the wrong Arduino pin. We'll not need it in our first sketch, so I'll fix that mistake later. With breadboard prototype in place, we need to write the code that will be our starting point to play with EEPROM. To start, we need LED to lit byte variable that will store the pin number of the LED we want to lit by pressing corresponding push button. In setup function, we declare Arduino pins A1, A2 and A3 as input, which use built-in pull-up resistors. Those pins will be connected to our three push buttons. So when the push button is pressed, the corresponding pin will read low signal, otherwise the signal will be high. Then we declare three digital pins 5, 6 and 7 as output. Those pins would be connected to three LEDs. In main loop, we start with three if statements, which check if any of the three push buttons was pressed. And if one of them was, it saves corresponding LED pin number to LED to lit variable. Then we check if LED to lit does not have initial value of zero, meaning one of the three buttons must have been pressed. If this is the case, depending on which button was pressed, we send high signal to selected LED to lit it and low signals to the other two to make sure they are turned off. Let's see how this code works when we load it to our prototype. Works great! But I always struggle to record video footage with LEDs because of those reflections. Here, to make it look better, I printed these white LED shades. Now, that looks much better. After restarting Arduino, you see that the information about which LED was on is lost. It is time to change our code to make it remember which LED was on after Arduino restart. Before we do that, let's look at all the methods at our disposal. Starting with read method. Here you can see the syntax. We provide the address and the method returns the byte which is written at that address. Here is a simple code. We have variable x and we read the byte from EEPROM at position 0 and assign it to that variable. There is an alternative way of doing it. You can address EEPROM like it is a large table. This simple code would perform the same action, reading byte from the position 0 to variable x. The next is the write method. Here we provide two parameters, the address and the byte value we want to write. Again, you have a sample code which writes value 128 at address 0. Here also we can achieve the same result by addressing EEPROM as a table. Actually, there is also a third way to get the same result, using update method. Update method writes the byte to the given address only when the existing byte at that address is different. You ask yourself a question, why would you need an update function when the write function does the trick? But please keep in mind the EEPROM write limits. Using update method we limit the number of writes. Probably not by much, but every little thing helps. Next method is EEPROM length. This function returns 
an unsigned integer containing the number of cells in the EEPROM. In the code we need to declare EEPROM library first. We need one more variable that holds the pin number of the currently lit LED. In the setup function the pins are declared in the same way. Same way we assign the value of LED to lit variable based on the reading from pins A1, A2 and A3. And then, when the LED to lit does not have the initial value, and if the value is different from the currently lit LED, we send high and low signals to corresponding pins to light up the right LED. Next, we use EEPROM write method to save the value of LED to lit to EEPROM at address 0, so to the first cell. Then we save the value of LED to lit variable to LED lit variable, so we can compare it with LED to lit variable value populated in the next loop function execution. When Arduino is powered down and powered up again, we are retrieving this value in setup function by using EEPROM read method. And using that retrieved value, we are sending high signal to the corresponding pin to light up the right LED. Let's see how this works. We lit different LEDs finishing with white one. We disconnect Arduino Connect it again and white LED is properly lit. Then we do the same for green and red LEDs and each time the last LED is properly lit. Now for something more complicated. I want to remember the sequence of lit LEDs so I can replay it even after restarting Arduino. We need two boolean variables, one is used to detect if we are in a record mode and the other uh, to detect that the button is currently pressed. Then we have variable for saving the states of each button, first three represent the buttons controlling the LEDs and the fourth one the button that will be used to finish recording of the sequence and starting the replay process. I will call it the end button. EEPROM address will hold current address at which we are writing to or reading from. Time variable would help us to avoid glitches and recognizing single press of the button as multiple ones. Declarations and setup functions are again unchanged. In loop we read the states of the buttons and save them into respective variables. Based on those states we send the corresponding values to LEDs. LEDs are only lit when the corresponding button is pressed. If any of the buttons linked to the LEDs is pressed and we are not yet in the record mode, we clear the EEPROM by writing zero values to the first few cells of EEPROM. I erase first 30 cells as I am not planning to record longer sequences. Then we enter record mode and set the EEPROM address to zero, so to the first cell. Then if we are in the record mode and button press flag is off, we check if any of the LED buttons was pressed. If it was, we set the button press flag to true and depending on which button was pressed we write the pin number of the corresponding LED to EEPROM at current address. We increase EEPROM address variable by 1 and record the timestamp at which the button was pressed. Each time we press another button, another value is written to EEPROM at the next available address and this way the sequence of lit LEDs is recorded. We assume that each button press lasts at least 300 milliseconds, so in the next loop we check if the button was released after at least 300 milliseconds. If it was, we turn button pressed flag off, then we check if the end button was pressed. If it was pressed while record flag was on, we exit record mode. If it was pressed when program was not in the record mode, we run the custom function to replay the recorded sequence. Let's look at it. We loop through the EEPROM addresses, reading the values one by one. Each value read is the pin number of the LED that should be lit, so the high signal is sent to it. After a second, we send low signal to turn it off and also wait for a second before processing the next cell of the EEPROM. Let's see how the program works. Before I start, please note that I have fixed the problems with end button connection. It is properly connected to ground and analog pin A0 now. So let's record the sequence of lighting up LEDs. That should be enough. Now let's press the end button. 
As you can see the sequence is properly replayed. Let's try to record a slightly longer one. Done. Again, it replays perfectly. And now let's restart Arduino and see if we still can replay the sequence. Great. We can complicate things even further. What if we don't want to write just single bytes to EEPROM but rather more complex data structures? In our little setup, we can e.g. want to record not just the sequence of LEDs but also how long each LED was lit for. We can create data type like this one, which holds that information. We want to write objects of that type starting at the address 0. So let's declare an object for our newly created type and maintain its values. It is not immediately clear how much bytes we need to allocate. We do not have to worry about this if we use put method. It writes whichever data type to EEPROM at a given address across as many bytes as it is required. After we are done, we can calculate which should be the address of the next object by using sizeof method to calculate the number of bytes needed and adding it to the eeprom address variable. In this way, we can continue writing the objects to the eeprom memory. Then we have a get method. Again, we declare our LED object and use eeprom get to read the pin and interval values. With those values we light up the corresponding LED for the required duration and then after adjusting eeprom address variable we can read another object and lit another LED and so on. The code got way too complicated to analyze it line by line but you will find the link to the code below so you can dissect the code yourself if you wish. So let's just check the final result. Let's record the sequence with certain LEDs being lit for longer than the others. And when finished, restart Arduino and see if we can replay the sequence. Looks good to me. This is it as far as this video is concerned. I was planning for this video to be short, but what do you know? This is the longest video I have ever made. So I'm not gonna bore you any much longer. Uh, I wish you all the best in New Year's and hopefully you are going to watch my videos in 2020. Over and out.